Let us bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your blessings. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here today to, to worship you, the opportunity to come to know you, the opportunity to learn more about the Holy Spirit, Lord. Uh, this has been a, a, such a beautiful subject for me to study, Lord. And every time I preach about it, I learn more about the power of the Holy Spirit. And I ask you, Lord, to please uh, give us wisdom and, 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 and let us, Lord, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit spirit we ask all this in the name of Jesus amen, amen. we have been talking um, about the Holy Spirit and uh, the first sermon that I talked to you guys about the Holy Spirit I, I spoke about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament and that the power of the of the of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament was manifested by wisdom you know, you, you hear a lot, David had a lot of wisdom, Daniel had a lot of wisdom, and the Bible will sometimes say they were full of wisdom, okay? And that wisdom was actually the power of how the Holy Spirit manifested itself. In fact, it, when you really read the, the, the scriptures, you find out that the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the people of God are not by speaking in tongues or jumping up and down, it's actually by wisdom, by wisdom, by God speaking to them through their minds. It's like when, you know, and, and I mentioned this in the sermon that when Paul would say, uh, the Holy Spirit did not let us go there. It wasn't that this force stood in front of them. No, it was really what Paul was talking about, that God was speaking to him through wisdom. And he were able to see things and say, you know what, that's not what the Holy Spirit wants uh, for us. So wisdom was, was a great way of the Holy Spirit manifesting itself. And then Pastor JC talked to you uh, about, about the power of the Holy Spirit. You guys remember that? I wasn't here, but I was listening to the sermon. Okay, believe me, when I'm not here on Saturdays at 11 o'clock, I turn that on and I'm listening to what's going on here. And he preached you a powerful sermon on, on the flesh, remember? Talked about the flesh and he talked about the Spirit of God. How we need to let the Spirit of God control us and the, Holy, and the Spirit of God begin to take over our minds, our thinking, and to not let the flesh control our lives. Okay, and then... Uh, um, Last week, I, uh, I spoke to you about, about the Holy Spirit. And I talked to you about the strength of the power of the Holy Spirit. I talked to you about the transformational power of the Holy Spirit and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Remember we talked about that the disciples received the Holy Spirit twice. Remember that? Twice. Jesus breathed on them and it said, and they received what? The Holy Spirit. And then we see that in the, in, the, in the upper room, then the Holy Spirit came down and empowered them. And we learn from that that for us to be empowered with the Holy Spirit, we must also, we must first receive the Spirit that transforms us. And the problem that we have in the church sometimes is that we ask for the power, but we don't ask for the, transform, for the transformation. We want power, but we don't want to change. We want God to manifest himself in the church. We want to heal people, but we don't want to change our lives. So we, we must, as we receive the Holy Spirit, we must receive the transformational power of the Holy Spirit so that God can now give us the power of the Holy Spirit. Because you see, if you are not transformed, what are you going to do with the power of the Holy Spirit? Sometimes people say, you know, you know, uh, pastor, you don't want to receive the Holy Spirit. And, and, and I say, so you receive the Holy Spirit. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. Unless you're not, unless you haven't been transformed. Imagine a person who hasn't been transformed. You give them the Holy Spirit. That's like, that's like these athletes that they give them. You know, they, no one's ever taught them. They live terrible lives, they, they, whatever. And they get into sport and they, and, and they give them $20 million. What do they do? Destroy themselves. Right? They don't know how to handle that. If you haven't been transformed, you don't know how to handle the power of the Holy Spirit. So for you to, to, to handle the power of the, of, of the, of the Holy Spirit, uh, you need to need that transformation. Wednesday, we've been preaching also on the, on the Holy Spirit. And, and, and this, this is, uh, you know, after I, after I got it ready and I preached it Wednesday night, I said, man, I should have. This is a Saturday sermon. 
Because it was, it was so powerful to me, the connection that we're, we made. And really the connection that we made was, was the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. You know, the relationship between the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And, and, and what we discovered in this Bible study Wednesday night, that the Word of God is the tool that God uses, that the Holy Spirit uses to transform us. That the word of God and the Holy Spirit go together because the word of God is the closest thing to the voice of God that we had today, isn't it? Amen. It's the closest thing that we have. The word of God is essential. In fact, it's so powerful that the Bible even calls Jesus the word. So the closest thing that we have of Jesus in this world is the Bible. It's his word. Now, what is the problem that we, we, we have? That many of us desire to be changed, but we don't read the word. We don't read the word. So what happens is you're not going to receive the Holy Spirit because today you come out here, maybe today's sermon, they haven't even started yet. Thank goodness we got lunch here today. But... Um, that maybe today, after you, you hear the sermon, you come out of here saying, I want, to, I, I, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. And if we do a calling, you come up here and say, Holy Spirit, please come down on me. Well, let me, I, got, I, got, I need to tell you something, what I told people Wednesday night. The Holy Spirit is not going to come down on you because you desire the Holy Spirit to come down on you. And one of the examples that I gave is that we receive salvation free, yes. We are born without our help. You are born without your help. <laughs> Somebody was made you born. You came and you had nothing to do with your birth. But later on, if you don't eat, you're going to what? You're going to die. You can desire to live. You can say, I want to live. I want to live, but if you don't eat, you're going to die. You can desire the Holy Spirit. You can want the Holy Spirit. But the word of God is essential for the Holy Spirit to become active in your life. The problem is that in the Christian church, we have a lot of people desiring, desiring to be good. Desiring to live the way God wants us to live, right? We desire to be all that, but we don't go to the word of God. We don't spend time studying the word of God. The word of God is essential. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is not just a book. It is the tool that the Holy Spirit uses to fill us with him, to fill us with the testimony of Jesus, to fill us with Jesus, to, uh, to, to give us the character of Jesus is through the study of the word of God. Something happens when we study the word of God. When you read your Joel Osteen book, you're going to get some good stuff, but it's not transformational. Okay? When you read a book, any other book, any of these high motivational books that people like to read now, because people are big into motivational right now, but that, those books, none of that, they give you good information. They get you hyped up for a month or a day. But true transformation is only brought by the word of God. By the word of God. And I was talking about Wednesday night was that when someone is like demon possessed, what book do you bring out? The Bible. And when you bring out the Bible, the devil trembles. How about you? How about us? What does the Bible do to us? So the, the devil might even recognize the Bible is more important than we do ourselves. So the Bible is essential to us being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now today, I want to talk about um, the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer. How the Holy Spirit works within us. How the Holy Spirit works within us who have believed. 
And as I was uh, uh, studying and, and writing down and, and studying and preparing the sermon this week, I started thinking about how the Holy Spirit was effective in my life. And maybe, uh, you know, when, when, you, when each believer looks at their own life and you can see where you came from. Have you ever thought about that? Thought about where you came from. Maybe the home you were brought up in. Maybe your, your, what type of father you had, what type of mother you had, um, where you were brought up. Uh, some have overcome diseases. Uh, and you start thinking maybe even how your marriage got started at first. And, and you start thinking about your childhood or you start thinking about your youth and you start looking, you start thinking about all these things that have occurred in your life. As I was, as I was preparing this sermon, I said, you know, without even looking at the Bible, just looking at my own experience in my life, there is, there is no doubt of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. Do you feel the same thing? As you have looked of where you came from and where you're at, you can see that there haven't been any accidents. You can, can you see where, where you could have gone without the Holy Spirit? Can you see where you could have been today? Can you see that you're sitting here today? But at the same time, can you think back and see that without the Holy Spirit speaking to you, reaching out to you, sending the right person to you, can you, can you think about where you could have been? Can you think about how God directed you to the right person for you that you got married to? Can you see how God led you with, with teachers, with people around you who actually made you who you are today? I mean, we look at this and, and, and we can see, we can see how active the Holy Spirit has been in our, in our lives. And, and as I looked at that, I can, I can see in, in so many instances, I can see that, you know, I'm here preaching to you guys today. And believe me, there are many other places that if I would have not had the leading of the Holy Spirit, I would not be here. I'd be completely somewhere else, completely the opposite of who I am today. And I'm sure you can say the same thing for yourselves. And, and, and sometimes we need to do that. You know why? Because sometimes we look at the moment. Sometimes we look at the crisis that we're going through in the moment and we're, we don't see where we've come from. We don't see how far we've gone. One of the things that the Holy Spirit does in the life of the believer is that he teaches us. Uh, he teaches us. If we go to John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, but the helper, the paracletos, okay? It's sort of like the, our lawyer, our assistant, the one that is with us, but our helper. You know, have you, I mean, when, when, when I think about that, I think of, you know, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, being my helper, the one who is, who is with me, uh, whom the Father will send in my name, says, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you now this verse you, you you have to take it apart to see what it what what it's really saying it says the holy spirit here's your helper uh, your helper uh, you you cannot have a helper if he's 20 miles away from you okay so if he is a helper that means he is with us Okay, he is with you and he is helping you. And right now, to be, to be more realistic, I think that he is right here with me, helping me to teach you the word. Amen. And he is bringing things to mind because believe me, not all that I say here I have in my notes. There are a lot of things as, as I'm preaching that I say that, that I actually, I mean, you might not know this, but I actually learn while I'm preaching. I learn while I'm preaching. 
And they're there, I mean, constantly, every time as I am preaching, and I look at a verse that I, I've been studying all day, all week at home, I don't really see it till I'm right here in front of you. It's because, because the preaching of the word of God is not, is not something human. It is something where God gets involved. Where I come out of here, sometimes I'm like, whoa, man, where did that come from? You know, I really learned something. And, and, and that's the way it is. So, he, so a helper means he is with you. And he just as he is with me here teaching, he is with you understanding. Where sometimes I might say something where I might be meaning one thing and you understand what you need to understand. You might not even understand what I think I want you to understand. You're actually understanding according to the need because the Holy Spirit translates his word according to your need. Amen. That's why I tell people, sometimes people say, well, I don't I, I just, I, I don't like that preacher. Well, that's because you go listen to the preacher. You got to go to church, listen to God. And if you listen to God, he's going to talk to you. You will never leave church empty if you go to church to listen to God. Something is going to be said if you pay attention and, you, and, you, and your mind is with, is with God because the Holy Spirit is not only here as the word is being said, the Holy Spirit also is talking to you. So you got to let, let go of all the garbage you have in your head. Let it all out because the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you today. He wants to have a little conversation with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to your remembrance. Here comes the word of God. Okay? He will come into remembrance all the things that I said to you. When, the, when Jesus was here and he was speaking to his disciples, what was he referring to? Jesus was referring to the things that he said to them, right? But when he's speaking to us today, what is he referring to? The word we read in the Bible. So it says, I will help you remember. You can't remember something you've never read. So, uh, so getting taught by the Holy Spirit begins, in, begins by reading the word of God. And you will, when you read the word of God, you will see the Holy Spirit teaching you. Okay? But, but you can't, he can't teach you if you don't open the book, that's the word of God. And he will help you to remember. And when you do that, you will find yourself in, in moments in your life where, you, where, where you're going to front, confront a situation. You're going to from, confront a temptation. You're going to confront something that you don't understand. Have you ever had where, where somebody asks you this difficult question? And when they start asking you, your, your brain, and you begin to Google stuff in your brain, right? <laughs> right? And you begin to Google this stuff because you don't know. As they're starting to ask you, you don't know. But if you've been a student of the Bible and the principles of the Bible, you find out that as they finish, you have this amazing answer. Have that happened? You have this amazing answer, and that amazing answer comes from what you have learned in the word of God that the Holy Spirit has taught you. Amen. So you have already experienced him teaching you. Amen. Now, Jesus spoke in person to these disciples, but now he speaks to us through his word. People say, I want to hear the word of God. I want to hear the word of God. It's right there. What's this deal? It's right there. But the word of God and the stu studying of the word of God is directly connected to the voice of God, to the closest thing of divinity that we have before us. And the tool that the Holy Spirit uses to do everything in our lives is through the Bible. He uses other people. You know, I like to say the word the Bible because I, if I say the word of God, you guys think it's some mystic thing. But I like to say the Bible. Okay, because sometimes they say the word of God and we're like, oh, the word of God, you know, and we start searching for the word of God. It's the Bible. 
You know, that book you left at home today. It's there. He uses other people and he teaches us. He teaches us through other people, not just the word of God. He teaches us through other people. And as I look back in my life, I, 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 I remember people. I remember uh, things that my parents uh, taught me, you know, and, 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 and I've told you things that, 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 that my mother, uh, you know, when she saw me straying away or being pulled by other powerful people, and, and she said to me one day, she said, she, she said, uh, 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 I, should I say, <laughs> you know, she had a name for me, so... <laughs> You know, no, no. She said, Machito, Machito, uh, um, I want you to know that these people want you for the gifts that God has given you to serve him. Whatever God gave you, use it to serve him. Don't serve the devil with the gift of God. And I remember that. I remember my, my, my brother-in-law, who's a pastor, Pastor Nunez, you know, and, 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 as I, and I came in and, and for the first, you know, I said, I want to study theology. You know, and that was like, whoa. And, and he, sa he said to me, well, phrase, he said, if you do that, you will save many and you will save yourself. Um... I remember a teacher, Mr. Maurer, eighth grade teacher, you know, he gave, who gave me the, 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 uh, the, the, the desire and, and, and the positive in my mind you know, to be able to do anything that I wanted to do. And he said, Juan, I believe in you. You know, when, 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 when a D was like an A to me, you know, he was like, you know, I'd get a D, I was like, yeah. You know, and, and, he, and he believed in me and he would tell me, you're better than that. You know, and I remember the exact spot where he was. I remember uh, uh, where he was. I, I, I remember all of that. And what I'm trying to say is that you all can remember the direction of the Holy Spirit by using other people who spoke to you words of wisdom. You know, and, and what I want you to, to see today is that the Holy Spirit has been so active in your life. That there is no doubt of the power of the Holy Spirit. I can try to prove to you verse by verse and do all these things. But what I'm saying to you today, look at your own life. And you can see how active he has been. Now, uh, uh. Uh, when you, it, that's why it's important when people come to church, when people come to church, that you, that you listen because God wants to, wants to, wants to speak to you. God wants to do that. Uh, that's why it's, it, it's important. One of the things that I, that I do is when I invite other preachers, when, when Pastor JC comes to preach or when, when Carl preaches or when Siam preaches here and I'm here in church, I'm going to sit down in that first chair and I want to listen to them because I know God is going to speak to me through them. What happens is that sometimes there are people who like to be minister, who like to minister but don't like to be ministered to. And sometimes you see church leaders and ministry leaders that because they are ministry leaders, you know, the, they do their part and the sermon is going to start and they take off. That is very disrespectful because they think that they have something to give, but no one has that nothing to give to them. And then their life is always empty because God wants to talk to them through other people, but they don't listen to other people. They don't give people the time of day. And that's why I constantly tell people that, are, that help us with lunch and help us with anything. I say, when it's sermon time, it's church time, you got to be here. I don't care what's ready. We have to prepare something. If people feel like they're waiting too long for lunch or whatever, they can go home and eat. You know, but here our priority is, 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 is here. And even sometimes we've been preparing lunch and some people feel we're, we're taking too long to prepare lunch. I say, well, what, you can go home and eat. You know, there's no problem. It's not like we live in a country where there's no food. You know, what is the big deal? 
But when we, when we, no matter what ministry we in, no matter what we do in, in church, when you don't stay and when you don't listen to other people, what they preach, what they say, their testimonies, the music, their singing, these are all methods through which God teaches us. But there's two things that are going to stop you. One is you don't think it's important and you, and you, and you leave and you, don't, and you don't participate in it. And the other is when you, when you close your mind to it. And, and a, a lot of times you might, it might close your mind because you don't like the person who's speaking. Or, or you've already put a negative mind. I said, you, like I said, you must come here to listen to God. And the Holy Spirit teaches you. But the Holy Spirit also, he testifies of Jesus. Okay, John 15, 26. John 15, 26 says, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. In other words, that you will get to know Jesus through the Holy Spirit. He reveals it to you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. One of the things he does, he reveals Jesus to you. See, only through the Holy Spirit, the reality of Christ becomes present with us. Think about it, people. Okay? Think about this. Jesus is, we could say, a man in history. The Bible stories are stories. The Bible is, we could say, a book. Okay? And we read many books. Have you noticed that what happens to you when you read the Bible is not the same thing as what happens to you when you read any other book? Okay? When you, when you read about Jesus, it's not like reading about Napoleon. When you read about Jesus, it's not like hearing about George Washington. It's not like, it's not like hearing. When you read about Jesus, why? Because the Holy Spirit gives testimony of Jesus. So when you read about Jesus, he doesn't, you don't only see what's in the letters. You see what the Spirit wants you to see. Something happens within you. A desire to become different. A desire to be like him. I've never wanted to be like Napoleon. But when I read the Bible, I want to be like Jesus. Something deep happens within us only through the Holy Spirit. Only through the Holy Spirit, people. The reality of Jesus and the purpose of Jesus comes through you. Only through the power of the Holy Spirit. Only through the Holy Spirit, the story or story of Jesus surpasses the level of his of, of a story of history and becomes transforming power. See, we talked about Wednesday night that for you to be in power of the Holy Spirit, the first thing you have to do is believe. If you don't believe, you can, those are the people who read the Bible, they really read it inside and out, and they say, well, I read the Bible from beginning to end, and they're the same. <laughs> Why? Because they've never believed. They've never believed. That's why Jesus says the first thing a person has to do is, is believe. Believe and you shall be saved, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when, 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 uh, uh, when Peter was preaching, they believed and when they believed they said what shall we do and peter says repent be baptized and be filled with the holy spirit Amen. okay and be filled with the holy spirit so you must believe when you believe now you've given the holy spirit permission to work in your life You've opened the door. Now when you read the Bible, it's, it's, it's something else. Now you have your helper with you. Now you have your paracletos. That when you read that verse, 
I mean, you don't see, I mean, I mean, there, there are times, you know, uh, when people who are not into the scripture, sometimes, you know, I'll read a verse and people will say, well, how did you, uh, how did you get that? <laughs> How'd you find that in that verse? It, there's nothing else really than the Holy Spirit teaching you. He testifies. Only the Holy Spirit can make God's word which is spoken, taught, or preached and, and reach the deepest parts of the listener or readers. Now, he convicts in John chapter 16, verse 8 and 11 says, and when he came home, and, and, when, he, and, and, and when he had come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment you need to look at this verse carefully because this verse though today's sermon is about the work of God and the believer this verse is not for the believers read it carefully and when he has come he will convict the what the world the world the world okay of sin a righteousness and of judgment how many times you ask yourself well what about who don't know? those who don't know how do you know they don't know <laughs> it says that part of the holy spirit's work is reaching out to that person who's never been to church and let him know what sin is. Let him know what is right and what is wrong. And let him know about judgment. Because they might not be able to explain a prophecy of Daniel. But they sure do know that stealing is wrong. They sure do know that lying is wrong. They sure do know that adultery is wrong. They sure do know that killing is wrong. They sure do know that a lot of other things are wrong. Why? Because it says, and when he comes, he will convict the who? The world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment, of sin, because, because they do not believe in me. You see who he's talking to? Of sin, because they do not believe in me. But it doesn't mean that he's not telling them what sin. It said of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is, is, is judged. So that's a work that Jesus did that the Holy Spirit. He doesn't only believe you know, within us, but he is also working in those ar around you. And when, and when you realize that the Holy Spirit is not only working in the church, and I remember from a long time ago, I preached a sermon, Jesus doesn't only go to church. I preached that sermon a long, a, a long time ago. You have to know that the Holy Spirit, though he works within his believers, it doesn't mean that he's not in the world uh, talking to people and impacting people. So we as Christians, we have to be constantly aware because the Holy Spirit might be working in somebody's life at your job. And you have to be able to catch that. And you have to be able to pick up the moment, okay, to help them, uh, to, 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 to help them come to know you, uh, to know Jesus, to introduce them to, to Jesus. He is also, uh, number four, he is our helper. We, we, have, we have said that Jesus, it is, uh, he teaches us. We've talked about he, uh, he testifies of Jesus. We talked about that he convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Number four, he is, he is our helper. He is our helper. Uh, John 16, 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper which not come will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. He is our helper. And as I was thinking that, I was, I was thinking, how, how could I explain that phrase, he is our helper? And, and since we live in a modern era, you know what I found? I, I said the best phrase is, is he is our GPS. Okay? 
He is, he is our GPS. You turn that thing on, right? And, 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 and there are a lot of times that we don't, we don't want to follow the GPS, right? And sometimes we don't. But this is a perfect GPS, okay? It's a perfect GPS. And there are times that we think we know something different. But if you have a really good GPS in your car, it's going to tell you there's, there's traffic somewhere. There's another way to go around. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tell you, you know, that, that, that that's been blocked. There's construction. It's going to tell you, you know... It, you know different things and 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 that, that holy spirit becomes that being that when you are in touch with the word of god it begins to direct you and it begins to guide you you know uh when you as a, as, as a parent know there's something wrong with your child you know you know uh when when, when you know there's just there, there's something that is that that, that that is not going right in, in 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 your life when life gets confusing when life gets confusing, people, there is, there is nothing better than to be in the word of God, than to have a your relationship with God, because that's when you need it. That's when you need some guidance. That's when you need some wisdom. That's when you need to go the right way. And, and w w what happens is that we confront those difficult times in our lives. And when they come to us, we don't know what to do because we haven't been in relationship with God. We haven't spent time in relationship with God. We haven't been talking to God. And, and, and our GPS has been turned off. Or our GPS is just not, not working. And, and, and we begin to do things our own way. We begin to do things in the way that we want to do them. When our life has, has, uh, has started out sometimes, uh, when, when we look, people, at some of your lives or some of our lives in the way we have started out, and look where we are today. And look where we are today. See, somehow you came to know Jesus and that GPS turned on. And that GPS led you to the right person to marry. That GPS turned you to the right people who taught you, led you for an education. That GPS led you in so many different ways. And that GPS has led you to a, to a life of victory, to a better life Today, I was, I, I was talking to my grandson this morning, and, uh, uh, and I was talking to him about, uh, you know, where I grew up, and I was talking to him about all friends who I grew up with, and, and, and where they are today, and where I am today. And I was talking to him about decisions, decisions that you make in your, in, in your life, and, and how when you let God in your life, in your, in, at your youth, it might seem boring, it might find, find, seem, seem like the worst decision, but at the end of the day, in the long run, what does it turn into? And you can see God's blessing. And the Holy Spirit, he is our helper. He is the one there to guide you. People, if we, but, but the thing is, remember, you must go to the word of God. He talks to you through the word of God. He talks to you there. If, if you're not into the word of God, don't think that you're going to sit there and, and, and somehow you're going to think of things and you're going to be filled with this mystical power and, and that has come over you. It's going to be about the word of God. It's going to be of how much you know the word of God. It's going to be how much you've studied the word of God. And, but, but sometimes we've connected the Holy Spirit to this mystic power, you know, that's just going to come uh, with us and and like I said earlier if you want to live you got to eat if you want to be alive spiritually if you want to be alive spiritually you got to eat the word of God you got to eat it also um, he makes us more like Christ the Holy Spirit is the one who makes us more like Christ but we all with unveiled face, 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 3.18. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as the Spirit of the Lord. He is the one who transforms us. He is the one who works within us. He is the one who creates the change in us as we study the word of God, 
as we become in touch with the word of God. Because you see, if it wasn't for the, for the, for the spirit, we would only have information, but we would not be changed. Amen. Information doesn't change anyone. And I think that sometimes we have too much information. And, and it, have you ever seen people who know a lot about the Bible? They know a lot about, about the scriptures and they can, they can do all these things and they can show all these dates and they can show you all these things or they can show you different things in the Bible and they know Greek and they know Hebrew and they can do all this, but yet their life is a complete mess. That is an evidence of a lack of the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, the word of God just becomes knowledge. It doesn't do anything for you. But the Holy Spirit, he is the one who uses the word of God, says beholding as in a mirror of glory of the Lord, as in a mirror of the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. You want to be more like Christ. You want to have his character. You want to be able to see things in the same way that Jesus saw it. You want to, you, 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 for you, for that to happen, you need to have knowledge of the word of God. And then the Holy Spirit within using his power, his power will create that transformation within us. Without the Holy Spirit, our church today would have no purpose at all. Without the Holy Spirit, change doesn't happen. Without the Holy Spirit, all we have is information. Without the Holy Spirit, we're just a club who come together of people who believe the same things. Without the Holy Spirit, the church loses all of its authority. But the interesting thing is that without the Holy Spirit, the same thing happens in our lives in our personal lives without the holy spirit you can talk to your children but your children will know if god is speaking through you and a lot of times we say a lot but the words are taken by the wind they don't have any weight to them and what gives them weight is the holy spirit as we desire the power of the Holy Spirit. We must take his word in us. And as we study the word in connection with the power of the Holy Spirit, true transformation begins to happen in us. If I ask to say, how many would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I don't think I've ever asked that question in any church without everybody raising their hand. Everybody raises their hands. So today, I'm not going to ask you if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, because I already know that you do. My question is today, are you willing to take the time to be filled with the Holy Spirit? That's the real question. The question is if you really want it, if you really desire it. If you really uh, see the importance of it. But you see, sometimes you got to be real about yourself. And sometimes you have to know that you don't want the Holy Spirit in your life. You got to know, right? You know <laughs> that if the Holy Spirit fills your life, some changes have to be made, right? you might not want to make those changes. Maybe the Holy Spirit is going to tell you to come to church Wednesday nights. I don't know if I want to do that. You know, maybe, you know, maybe the Holy Spirit is going to tell you there's some shows you have to stop watching. Right? You might not want to do that. Maybe the Holy Spirit is going to tell you that you're going to have to start getting up 30 minutes or an hour early to spend with him. You might not want to do that. 
So a lot of times, the prayer is not, Lord, fill me. But a lot of times, the prayer is, Lord, you know I don't want this, but you know how much I need it. A lot of times, the prayer is to help me want it. Because we want things, but we don't want them bad enough. Like I said, if somebody says, you know, fill me with the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit filled, filled you, what you want to do with it? What? What's going to change in your life? What are you going to do different? Are you ready to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you ready to make some drastic changes in your life? Are you ready to make God a priority in your life? Or do you still have your own personal goals that you want to reach? Your own personal things that you want to do? Are you still number one in your life? Instead of God being number one. Are your own personal goals, your own personal desires, what's number one in your, in your, in your life? See, those are all things that are realities in our lives. So a lot of times, we have to know our true condition and get into the word of God. So a lot of times you're going, to, you're going to get into the word of God, not because you want to, but because you know you need to. But as you begin to do that, then the Holy Spirit begins to work. And he gets you to fall in love with the word and he gets you to experience the power of the word. And you begin to want more of Jesus. And then you begin to desire the change. Then you begin to see the fruits of the change and of what God has done for you. So people today, I want to ask you to, to take a chance and to do what you know you should do instead of what you want to do. We live in a world of people only doing what they want to do and not what they need to do. And we need to start getting into the word, not because you want to, but because you need. We have a, we have a class here uh, of new believers. If you, if you don't know about the word of God and you say, well, where do I start? Come join the class of new, new, new believers on Monday nights here at 730. If, if you want to get closer to God, join our, our, our prayer meeting Wednesday nights. Take time out every day. To study the word of God. Because you can't just desire the Holy Spirit. You will desire it and want it the rest of your life. But it will never happen unless you get into the word of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your blessings. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to be here today. To learn more about you, Lord. Lord, we need your power within us. And you have given us the tool to be able to, to study your word and to be able to, to have your word be powerful within us. And help us, Lord, to, to study it more. Help us, Lord, to, to get to know it better. And help us, Lord, to, to really want to be filled, to really be transformed by you. Lord, we, we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.